In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to derive the reduction formula for sine to the power n of x. And then after that, we're going to see how to use the reduction formula to evaluate sine to the power 3x. Now, of course, we saw in previous classes that it's possible for us to evaluate sine to the power 3 of x using just a, a trig substitution. But we want to see if the use of a reduction formula actually makes the work easier or, or not. And if it does make the work easier, maybe we might just realize that uh, the use of a reduction formula when it is known or when it can easily be derived is the easiest way of evaluating such integrals. Now, reduction formulas are based on uh, integration by parts. So the first part when deriving these formulas, we're going to use integration by parts to derive them. After we have derived them, you will see that we no longer need to go through by parts again as the formula can be used to, uh, to more like cut corners. Now let's see what we have to do. Well, in by parts, we need an expression to be evaluated in two parts or as a product of two things so that we can pick one to be the u and the other to be the v. So in this case, what we have is the integral of sine to the power n of x dx, which is just one term, but we can split it. If we focus on the sine n there, or sine to the power n, we can s reduce that one a little bit. And it becomes, if I reduce it by 1, so that I'll say sine n minus 1 of x, multiplying sine x. So this is the same thing. I know to say if I'm multiplying them, this is the same as just sine x to the power n minus 1 plus 1, which reduces as just sine to the power n. Since I'm multiplying things the same base, of course, we just add the powers. So that's that. Once you've reached this part, you now have to choose. You want one part to be u, the other part to be uh, dv. So here we're going to say, let u be equals to sine n minus 1. So the part with the n minus 1 becomes the u term. It will be the same approach even when we'll be doing it for cos. The part with the n minus 1 will be the u. So this, of course, implies that the rest of the expression becomes our dv. So dv will be equals to sine x dx. Now, of course, after picking what u is, we have to differentiate u. So by differentiating u, we see to say the derivative of, uh, we're going to do this by, um, of course, chain. So first we differentiate the whole thing. So the n minus 1 comes down. And then when we differentiate, um, yeah, this, this will remain the way it is. So we're going to have sine. We'll reduce the power by 1. So that becomes n minus 2 of x. After that, we'll now differentiate the sine itself. The derivative of sine is just going to be cos x. So that is just du. Then dv here, we're going to integrate the integral of v dv is just going to be v. The integral of sine is going to be negative cos. So we have found those two. So we can now use by parts to uh, find the integral of this. So of course, I'll just write that in the standard way that we it was given to us. So of course, it was sine to the power n of x. But I'll use the... Uh, the u and the v, the way I got them here. So from the definition of by parts, we know to say it's u multiplying v. So our u is sine n minus 1 of x. Then we have v. v is negative, so I'll put the minus here. Then we have cos here, cos x. Then minus, now we need the integral of v again v comes with the minus so the minus will make this positive and then we have cos x and then we need our du our du comes with let me just copy it our du is all this okay so from here we can simplify this a little bit, just pulling out the constants and so on. So we have minus sine n minus 1x, then cos x, 
then this becomes plus i'll pull out the n minus one then inside the bracket what will remain with here is going to be so there's a dx which is not showing there there's dx way at the end yeah i didn't write it here so there's a dx way at the end so the cos and the cos here will multiply giving us cos squared so here we're going to have cos squared x and then we're also going to have the sine n minus 2x here then the x so of course the next part is to observe that that cos squared we want to write it in terms of sine so i can use the identity that sine squared plus cos squared is equals to one and use this part of it or this version of it cos squared is equals to one minus sine squared x so where there's cos squared there we're now going to put sine squared one minus sine squared x the first part is the same i'll just copy this so just copy this but where we have um the cos squared we're going to have one minus sine squared x and then we have sine here n minus 2 x and then dx so you have minus the whole thing again so in this part now we're just going to expand this that's what we're going to focus on so the first part i just keep on copying it the exact way it is plus so this is to n minus one so this becomes the integral of when i distribute this part the first term must to be exactly the way it is sine n minus two of x but the second part perhaps i should distribute the dx as well so let's say dx and the integral so then this becomes uh minus the minus from the sine squared there so this would be n minus one and the integral of this is going to be sine squared x and sine n minus two you have to say that the two and the two will go leaving us with only sine to the power n of x dx so i hope you guys were able to see what i did there so i multiplied this with the with this part also let me say i distributed the sine n minus 2 inside these brackets first after that then i distributed the dx and the integral to come up with this term and also to come up with this term the minus here is as a result of the minus right on the middle there okay so let's proceed let's simplify now what you want to observe here is that this part here with the sine squared or with the sine to the power n it's similar to what we have on our left hand side so on our left hand side what we have is sine to the power n of x dx so those two parts are the same so we're going to group them so we'll move this to the other side of the equal sign so this is going to be sine to the power n of x dx then plus down uh, yeah that's going to be plus n minus one and then the integral of sine to the power n of x dx the right hand side is almost complete so we're just missing we're just playing around with the left hand side now so this is two minus sine n minus one of x cos x then plus n minus one and then we have the integral of sine n minus 2 of x dx okay so that's done this is the other side so okay so what we're going to do here is we're just going to distribute this and see how it looks so if i focus on the left hand side now this is uh this dx i want to distribute this and observe that if i did that this is going to be plus first we're going to have n the integral of sine n of x dx then next you're going to have minus the integral of sine n of x dx so on the left side this is all on the left side observe that this is going to subtract with this so let me just say equals to right hand side so this these two are going to subtract out meaning that the left hand side will now just be this then we have sine to the power n of x dx equals to and on the right side 
we still have this expression. Okay, so we have this. Okay, dx. So we are literally done. From here, this is now going to be sine to the power n of x dx is equals to, so this becomes minus 1 over n sine to the power n minus 1 cos x, then plus n minus 1 over 2, not over 2, sorry, over n. I'm dividing this n everywhere so that I cancel it on the left side. Then the integral of sine n minus 2 of x dx. Let me just move this to create space. Of x dx. Okay, so this becomes the expression for the nth integral of this expansion. So this is the reduction formula. Now, how does it work? How do you use the reduction formula to perform an integral? And does it really provide the easiest way of evaluating integrals um, of this nature? Well, to understand that or to answer that, let's look at an example. Let's look at this question. So I'll pick an easy case. So let's say like this. I'll pick an easy case here. It's something that you can integrate using other means so you can easily verify it. So you have the integral of sine to the power 3 of x dx. Again, this can be the power 5, it can be the power 6, and so on. Okay, now how does it work? Well, in this case, observe that if you compare it with the, uh, the one we're working with, you see that here, n is equals to 3. So n is 3. So if n is 3, what does that imply? Well, n is equals to 3. According to our reduction formula, the integral then of sine to the power 3 of x dx is equals to, let's see what comes first according to our reduction formula. Well, when you go to our reduction formula, look at what it is saying. Well, if you have an integral of this nature, the first thing that comes is negative 1 over n. Well, our n is 3. So this is going to be negative 1 over 3. Then what comes next? Then sine n minus 1. Well, sine, so this becomes sine. It's n minus 1. Our n is 3 again, so it's 3 minus 1, which is 2 of x. Then we continue. Then cos x. Well, there's, no, there's nothing we have to do there, so it's just cos x. Then plus. What comes next? n minus 1. Well, again, n is 3, so it's going to be 3 minus 1 over 3. So 3 minus 1 is 2, so that becomes 2 over 3. Then next, the integral of sine n minus 2. Again, n is 3, so that becomes the integral of sine n minus 2. That's 3 minus 2, which is 1. So that will just be this. Is that the last part? Yes, that's all. Then dx. Well, look at that. It didn't take us long. Because after this, we see that what we have here, it's a standard integral. So the final solution then becomes 1 over 3 sine squared x cos x plus, so the integral of, of sine is going to be negative cos. So this is going to be the negative that comes outside. So we're going to have 2 over 3, then cos x. Then, since this was the last part, then plus c constant of integration. So this becomes the final answer. In the next class, we're going to look at how you derive the a reduction formula for cosine and then also look at an example. Now guys, we'll see you in the next class.